Good morning. We shall read the entrance antiphon for the Mass. Blessed are you, O Virgin Mary, O Lord, the creator of all things. You became the mother of your maker, and you remain forever virgin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Let's ask God to forgive our sins and to make us worthy to celebrate this Eucharist. I confess, and to you, my brothers and sisters, in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most gravest fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, O merciful God, protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Holy Mother of God may, with the help of her intercessions, rise up from our inequalities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the first book of Maccabees. As King Antiochus was traversing the inland provinces, he heard that in Persia there was a city called Elimias, famous for its wealth in silver and gold, and that his temple was very rich, containing gold helmets, breastplates, and weapons left there by Alexander, son of Philip, king of Macedon the first king of the Greeks. He went, therefore, and tried to capture and pillage the city, but he could not do so. Because his plan became known to the people of the city, who rose up in battle against him. So he retreated and, in great dismay, withdrew from there to return to Babylon. While he was in Persia, a messenger brought him news that the army sent into the land of Judah had been put to flight, that Lysias had gone at first with a strong army and been driven back by the children of Israel, for that they had grown strong by reason of the arms, men, and abundant possessions taken from the armies they had destroyed, that they had pulled down the abomination which he built upon the altar in Jerusalem, and that they had surrounded with high walls both the sanctuary as it had been before and his city of Bethzur. When the king heard this news, he was struck with fear and very much shaken. Sick with grief because his designs had failed, he took to bed. There he remained many days overwhelmed with sorrow, for he knew he was going to die. So he called in all his friends and said to them, Sleep has departed from my eyes, for my heart is sinking with anxiety. I said to myself, Into what tribulation have I come, and in what floods of sorrow am I now? Yet I was kindly and beloved in my rule. But I now recall the evils I did in Jerusalem when I carried away all the vessels of gold and silver that were in it, 
and for no cause gave orders that the inhabitants of Judah be destroyed. I know that this is why these evils have overtaken me, and now I am dying in bitter grief in a foreign land. The word of the Lord. I will rejoice in your salvation, O Lord. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will declare your wondrous deeds. I will be glad and exult in you. I will sing praise to your name, Most High. Because my enemies are turned back, overthrown and destroyed before you. You rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. Their name you blotted out forever and ever. The nations are sunk in the pit that they have made. In the snare they set, their foot is caught. For the needy shall not always be forgotten, nor shall the hope of the afflicted forever perish. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Our Savior Jesus Christ has destroyed death and brought life to the life through the gospel. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Some Sadducees, those who deny that there is no, there is resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up de descendants for his brother. Now, there were seven brothers. The first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise, all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now, at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her, Jesus said to them, the children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead, neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise that the dead will rise. Even Moses made known in the passage about the bush when he called Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For him, all are alive. Some of the scribes said in reply, Teacher, you have answered well, and they no longer dare to ask him anything. The Gospel of the Lord. During the time of Jesus, there were four sects or groups of people in Judaism itself. The Pharisees, we often hear in the Gospel readings, 
the scribes, we hear them in the Gospels, and the Essenes, we don't hear them about them in the Gospels. And the fourth group is Sadducees, the one that we heard in today's Gospel reading. This group of people, they join their hands with the Romans. Oftentimes, Jewish people, they don't want to do anything with the people who are ruling them, the Romans. But Sadducees, they have no problem enjoying their hands with the Romans and accepting their rule on them. And this is a very peculiar group. This group of people, the Sadducees, they believe only the first five books in the Old Testament, the Torah, the law, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And they don't believe any of the prophets or prophetical books or historical books. And this is the people, they deny that there is no resurrection. They deny that there is uh, no angels. They deny anything that is afterlife. They think this worldly life is the only life. And once you die, everything comes to an end. And that's why they wanted to put Jesus into trouble, or they wanted to test Jesus. So they came up with a story we heard in today's gospel reading. But Jesus proves to them, very important point, that there is a resurrection. And he quotes from the book of Exodus itself, where when God appeared to Moses, he calls himself, God, Yahweh calls himself, when Moses asked, who are you? He said, I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. But to this bodily, to this earthly life, they all have died and gone by the time Moses was alive. So Jesus says, when he names himself as people who have died, which means they're still living, and they should be living in a place, and there's a place called heaven. And he not only taught them today the gospel reading, but he also proved it in his own life. When he died, he rose again and appeared to the apostles and many other people. And St. Paul in one of his letters says, once Jesus appeared to a huge group of 500 people. So resurrection is true. We have a life after this earthly life. That life would be with God. And that's the life that Jesus promised for all of us who believe in him. In John's gospel, he, he very clearly tells us, I am the resurrection and life. Everyone who believes in me will live even if they die. So dear brothers and sisters, heaven is true. And that heaven is promised for all of us and for everyone who believes in Jesus. And today as we continue to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, let's ask him to be with us, to live this life to the full and to be worthy of resurrection and heavenly life. We shall all stand and pray for our needs. For the church, may she, by the power of the Holy Spirit, be a home for those who are searching and a place for healing for those who are broken. We pray to the Lord. For civic leaders, may God's wisdom inform their decision making in seeking to protect the most vulnerable among us. We pray to the Lord. For those who are burdened by guilt, may they find freedom in God's forgiveness. We pray to the Lord. For this faith community, may we be given the grace to catechize, evangelize, and share Christ with others. We pray to the Lord. For those who have died, may they enjoy everlasting peace with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. 
And so what else shall we pray now? Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray. God of mercy and hope, receive our prayers this day as we offer in faith and trust in Jesus, your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord, our God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we honor the memory of the mother of your son, we pray, O Lord, that the oblation of this sacrifice may, by your grace, make of us an eternal offering to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, and to praise you and to bless and glorify your name on this memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For by an overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, 
she conceived your only begotten Son, without losing the glory of virginity, brought forth into the world the eternal light, Jesus Christ. Through him angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy <coughs> Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Son and the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son and highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them, let the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, entered willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. <coughs> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with fancies our Pope, Paul our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with the blessed Joseph, our spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you always. Let's offer each other the sign of peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of them. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy, but only say the word, my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon. He who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Let us pray. Having been made partakers of eternal redemption, we pray, O Lord, that we who commemorate the mother of your son may glory in the fullness of your grace and experience its continued increase for our salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Mass is ascended. We shall go in peace. Pray to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan, all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. <laughs>